Here we have an SPSS data set. As you can see at the top here, we have three variables. <clears throat> Gender, nasal hair, finger length. So those are the three variables, three characteristics that were either asked or collected from individuals. The individuals are numbered on the left side here. So as we go down, we can scroll down. I'm scrolling with the roller on my mouse. I can see that there are 34 people, 34 individuals. It doesn't always have to be people. I'm assuming it's people since we're dealing with gender, nasal hair, and finger length uh, that were either surveyed or that were measured in some way. At the top, we have all the various functions, uh, the function titles that we can utilize in our SPSS. At the bottom, and these are here, we have shortcuts. These are some shortcuts that have been chosen by SPSS to be more common. At the bottom, we also have the different views. We have data view and variable view. I'm going to click on variable view and you'll see a totally different view. So if you open up a, a, a data set and you see variable view, you might see something like this and that doesn't look like a set of data. So then you simply scroll to the bottom and click on data view to get that. Let's explore variable view for a minute. In variable view, what you see is you see the name of the variable, the type, width, the number of decimal places, a label. These labels were created by me. The values, again, I have to set these. How do I define missing values? The number of columns, alignment, and what type of measure or what type of data do we have? Well, we know that gender is a categorical variable. So I'm going to click on here and we're going to change this. It's not ordinal, it's not nominal. In SPSS parlance, scale means measurement data. So this is a nominal variable. Nasal hair, well, we need to take a look at how we've defined it. To take a look at how we've defined it, because it could be length of nasal hair, and that would be a me measurement variable. So we're going to look at under the values. Click here, and what we can see is that's none, sum, and extensive. So that is an ordinal variable, because there's order there. Now we go back here, and we go back to data view. So we can see zeros, zeros, ones, twos, zeros, and ones. But we don't, in data view, we don't know what these mean. And remember, there are value, val value labels in variable view. And I can go to see those labels visually when I'm in data view by going to view and to value labels. So now we see that the first 19 people on this list are male, the rest are female. This male had no nasal hair and had a finger length of 7.2. This male had no nasal hair and had a finger length of 8, and so on. So we can go through each individual case and see what that individual case had, what characteristics that individual case had. But I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to do an exploration. Most explorations that you're going to do with SPSS go, you will either be using Analyze or Graphs. Graphs gives you a full list of graphs here. I'm not going to go into that right now. But a quick exploration is usually done best by going into Analysis. And we're going to go through you get the three typical ones and when you're looking at variables individually are frequencies, descriptives, and exploration. So let's look at a quick okay so this is what this is what the screen will look like when you go in for the first time. And really I want to explore I'm going to only explore the categorical variables first because we do different things with categorical variables than we do with measurement variables. So what statistics do we want? Do we want quartiles? Do we want midpoints? Do we want percentiles? Standard deviation? Variance? All of these here are not useful for us with categorical da data. So I will ignore those. We will continue without selecting any. There are some charts that might be useful. 
bar charts, pie charts, those two would be useful for us. So let's go with bar charts. Which values do we want? Do we want frequencies? Do we want percentages? Well, it's a that's a toss up here in this case, so we'll just go with we'll stay with frequencies. And we click on OK. And here we have our output. I'm just going to set it beside here so we can get a good view of it. Okay, the first part in the output just tells you what the SPSS did. It tells me there were 34 valid subjects. No values were missing, which is good. It's nice when we don't have any missing values. I'm going to extend the window to the bottom here. So we have 19 males. So these that's these first 19 that are male. And 15 females, that's the rest. Below, going below there. We have... 12 people with no nasal hair, 15 people with some, and 7 people with extensive nasal hair. I'm analyzing the vi variables individually right now, independently of each other. Gender of subject, okay, that's the value label I gave it. So again, we can see a bar chart, so we can see there are more males and females. This mimics what we saw in the frequency table. Same thing with the amount of nasal hair. More people had some nasal hair, then had none or had extensive nasal hair. And that's basically all I asked SPSS to do in this case. Now, I'm going to minimize this. So I'm going to save this. This is going to be saved here. And I'm going to analyze my measurement variable. So I'm going to go to Analyze. Again, descriptive statistics frequencies. And I'm going to deselect the categorical variables and keep or select the length of the index finger because I do want this to analyze this as a measurement variable. In this case, frequency tables doesn't make sense. But only in rare occasions will it make sense. So in, when you have a measurement variable in the box here under variables, you will deselect frequency tables, otherwise you'll get some nonsense. Statistics, we do want statistics here. Well, let's try some quartiles, standard deviation, five standard deviation, I don't really need variance, range, minimum, maximum would be nice, mean, median, mode, sum is not very useful here, skewness and kurtosis are really for checking um, normality whether the distribution is normal, so that's beyond what we need right now. Standard error, the mean, is also something that's used for more sophisticated analysis. So right now we've just got those basics, and now instead of a bar chart, we're going to take a histogram. And you can have it with the normal curve or not. At this point, we don't need it. And we click OK. And you'll see that this is the top of the output file. This and this is all that categorical output there. Now this is the measurement variable. Length of index finger in centimeters. So again we see 34 people, with zero missing. The mean was 7.2, the median was 7.2, the mode was 7.2. So very, all, very close to each other. Standard deviation is 0 0.6, range is 3.2, minimum value is 5.5, maximum is 8.7. And this is what the uh, histogram looks like. And so you can see we have a very high number right beside the 7 here. And then it falls off to the left, sorry, to the right and to the left. Which is what you'd expect. You'd expect fewer people with very long and very short index fingers. And the great majority of people with, uh, in a narrow range. So we've now explored these two, these three variables, the two different types of variables. In the next video, we will look at combining the two. Oh, that's if we want to save. Okay, that's totally gone. So I'm going to 